They're known around the world. They give basketball a new dimension. They thrill audiences everywhere. They're the new, exciting Harlem Globetrotters. See the best, the slam dunkin', fancy dribblin', razzle dazzlin' Harlem Globetrotters. Come and catch the magic. Burger King and Central New York 9 welcome the Harlem Globetrotters World Tour to the Onondaga County War Memorial, Monday, March 27th. WIXT, Syracuse, Central New York 9. Live from the WIXT Broadcast Center, Scott Byrill and Jack Morse on sports. This is 9 Eyewitness News. Alaska's governor is ready to declare a disaster. Good evening, I'm Scott Byrill. Oil is still spewing out of a ruptured tanker in Alaska tonight. The slick now covering a 50 square mile area. And as crews scramble to clean up the oil, there's word the third mate was in charge when the tanker ran aground on a reef. That is a violation of company policy. Gary Shepard has the latest. Exxon officials confirm the tanker's captain was not on the bridge when the vessel ran aground. The captain and two other crew members have been given mandatory blood alcohol tests. The Coast Guard estimates the oil slick has now expanded to 50 square miles, and one federal official says it will soon begin hitting shorelines. The big determinant is going to be where does it go from here, because now it's, it's getting wide enough and close enough to, sh to the shore that uh, it's going to start, the damage is going to start happening. This bird died as a result of getting stuck in the oil slick. Experts say thousands of other birds and hundreds of marine mammals are threatened. And tonight, commercial fishermen who fear they may lose money because of the oil spill are demanding full compensation from Exxon. Crews are still transferring the oil on board the ruptured tanker to another one. That process, they say, could take another week. The U.S. government tonight says it is hot on the trail of those responsible for lacing two Chilean grapes with cyanide. The head of the Food and Drug Administration says authorities know the name of the firm that shipped the grapes to the U.S., and they believe the tampering was done in Chile. Despite the cyanide scare, the FDA says our food supply is safe, but warns we have to keep our eyes open. What I would not eat personally is raw food. I believe that one of the layers of safety that we have is cooking, and I'm now talking about animal and fish flesh raw. That's a little more risky, but on balance, each person takes their own choice. You recognize the risk, and you go to it. Young says whoever poisoned the grapes could be prosecuted under U.S. laws. For the first time in more than 70 years, Soviet voters have a choice of candidates. The Soviet Union today held its first general elections ever. Voters heading to the polls to select candidates for the country's new parliament. Even Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev and his wife Raiza cast their ballots today. The most closely watched race involves former Moscow party boss Boris Yeltsin, who has openly criticized the Communist Party. An informal exit poll shows Yeltsin is on his way to a landslide victory. Today's elections are part of Gorbachev's political reform plan. It's expected to take 10 days before official results are in. Today marks the 10th anniversary of the historic Camp David Accords, a pact that brought peace between Israel and Egypt. Israel's Menachem Begin and Egypt's Anwar Sadat signed the treaty here at the White House. Former President Jimmy Carter instrumental in bringing those two countries together. In a recent interview, Carter said the treaty, thanks to the treaty, there's still hope for peace in the Middle East. I think that um, just the fact that Begin and his associates in the Likud coalition say the Camp David Accords is a good basis for peace, and the fact that the Palestinians now say it has very good terms for Palestinians offers promise for the future. The Camp David Treaty is still in effect today, but it was clear this Easter weekend tensions in the Middle East have not eased. Fighting marred the holiday here in Beirut, Christians and Muslims exchanging gunfire for the third straight night. Five people were killed, dozens of others injured here in this latest round of violence. Thousands of people tonight are taking refuge in bomb shelters, hoping to escape that shelling. Here in the Holy Land itself, Easter services went off as planned, pilgrims trekking to Jerusalem where Jesus is believed to have been buried. But fewer people made the journey to this holy city, apparently fearing the violence in the occupied territories. And in his Easter message, Pope John Paul called for an end to that fighting in the Holy Land. The pontiff blaming politicians for the uprisings in the Middle East. Some 200,000 people gathering here in St. Peter's Square for the Pope's Easter Mass, delivered in 52 languages. 
The pontiff also asked Christians to pray for those persecuted for their faith and for women and children suffering abuse around the world. Here in central New York, the Easter season is a time to celebrate and also to focus on the future. And the future is getting brighter for this little girl, six-year-old Rosa Kazarian, a victim of last year's earthquake in Armenia. The local Armenian community welcomed Rosa and 14-year-old Era Tedavazian here at Easter services. The two youngsters are now on the road to recovery. The children, I think, have come along real well. If you had seen them the first week, you know, it was a, it was a culture shock for them. You know, they were doubtful about this and that. I think they've gotten a lot of encouragement, and there's been signs of Rosa, you know, standing up in her cast. The two children came to Central New York for medical treatment at Cross Irving Memorial Hospital. And the hungry and homeless got some special treatment here at the rescue mission. Every year, the center opens its doors to feed the less fortunate in the community. They not only get to feast on good food, but they have the chance to share the company of good friends. I think that's the most important part of it, is the fact that they're able to have uh, dinner on a special holiday like today, and they feel as though they're a part of a family, they're not left alone, and many of these are, are, are people would otherwise would be alone on Easter Sunday. The rescue mission serves about 200 people each Easter. While a lot of folks were enjoying Easter, others were celebrating spring, and what a day. As Christy Casciano found out, Central New Yorkers wasted no time wondering what to do in the warm weather. Sunshine and mild temperatures, the kind of day that you just had to get outside and enjoy. And there were plenty of Central New Yorkers doing just that. It's the best Easter I ever had. How come? Because it's, it's really sunny out. And sunny enough to shed the winter wear and wear your Sunday best. A popular place to be today was at the neighborhood park. This is the first time that you've uh, given tried this. Huh? Yeah, try I'm taking my little guy out to try it. It's going to spring to me. And are you thinking spring? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> what are some of the things that you have in mind? To do walk my dog, play basketball. I can walk the dog. Kids have mothballed the ice skates and are breaking out the skateboards, the basketballs, and the bikes. And adults, well, they're ready to break out the golf clubs. While the course may be a little bit on the muddy side, there are some golfers who never say never. Never thought you'd be out in March, did you? Oh, I figured I'd be out at least once in March. You did? Yes. Pretty traditional? No, pretty stupid, I guess. <laughs> First time out this year? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty nice day. I thought I would take advantage of the weather and see what I could do. How'd you do? I better try again, I think. Apparently, it isn't very difficult for Central New Yorkers to say goodbye to winter. They're already kicking up their heels. Christy Casciano, 9, Eyewitness News. And it looks like we're in for another nice day tomorrow. Your complete forecast coming up. Plans for a major mall are running into some snags, and thousands head home after the holiday. We'll talk to travelers. These stories and lots more still ahead when 9 Eyewitness News continues.